everybody, thanks for being here. Um, I really appreciate it. But this, I, I want to get this off my chest right off the bat. Is that this is this is going to be the last video I ever do. I don't see any reason to do any any more after this. Um, this is pretty in depth. I think it's going to be beyond the scope of most people's uh, ability to even consider. But uh, hopefully, you'll look into it on your own uh, over the next month or six or year, whatever you have left. <laughs> I don't have any idea how much time we have left, but uh, at the rate they're going, probably not much. Um, everything, I'm going to basically be doing one long video, but it's going to have three or four components to it. And every one of these components, all of this, what, everything I do today, if it looks like I'm dressed like this, everything in those videos applies to any country that has a central banking system in place. So everything I do on this board re it relates directly to all central banking uh, communities, countries, companies, whatever you want to call them, everything I talk about today. And uh, Let's just get to that for a second. <clears throat> today I'm going to talk about the will and testament, what that actually means, because I don't believe anybody in America possibly the world, other than those in control, know what the will and testament actually consists of. I'm going to be doing a quick uh, once-over on the concept of the law merchant. In the United States, or within the United States, the law merchant is called the Department of Justice. That's the system that they put in place, the bankers put in place in 1870 to look over their property. Um, I'm going to be doing sort of a timeline sketch of the birth certificate and the certificate of live birth. And the entities that mom and mother created when she went into their public charitable hospital called the Foundin, Foundling Hospital. And finally, the, probably the most important thing I do today is going to be called what I call the house. And, and everybody watching this, whether they want to believe it or not, I don't care how patriotic you think you're going to be, after this explanation of the house, there shouldn't be a soul who wants to live under the terms of those that claim to be your caretakers. Because everybody watching this, 100%, I guarantee it, 100% of everybody that's watching this explanation lives in their house, resides within their house, under their roof. So I'm going to be going over the will and testament, the law merchant, the birth certificate, and the house. Um, another thing I want to do is, is explain... Now, first of all, let's do this. I'm going to try to do all this up front so I can just stay on track with everything else. I want to, I want to give thanks to the people that over the last couple years have, have really either taken the time or provided information for me that was, it was critical for me to coming to some of these conclusions that I've come to. Um, I want to thank, first and foremost, the informer. Without that man's works, and everybody should, if you don't have them, you should be purchasing them right now. I don't care. Go online, find out where you can buy them. Uh, if you have to, contact me at, at walkthetalk.us at gmail.com, and I will hook you up with the Informer's Works. The Informer is the man that actually made it possible for me to understand the true history of America, not the garbage that's, ta that's taught in the public schools. That's garbage. Uh, Robert Menard up in Canada, he taught me about the concept of the society, where I came up to the, with the idea of the house. So, thank you, Robert Menard. Gene Keating... Uh, a lot of people have trouble with that man, but you know what he did? He, he expressed, he made it possible for me to understand the concept of commerce and how it all fits together and how the, 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 uh, the jailing system, how, the, how the, their private legal system does what it does for, for profit. Um, Rob Ryder, thank you very much for the, the idea of the deed and everything that meant to me. Franco Collins, I believe, uh, with the canon law and all your explanations about the Vatican and things like that, it, it, it connected an awful a lot of dots for me. John Harris over in England, thank you for your person. Well, not for your person personally, but thank you for your explanation of person. Uh, it really helped a lot. Bruce Ray Riggs down in Florida, uh, Mr. DirtyUncleSam.com, uh, thank you for your input on the 14th Amendment. Uh, without you, I would have never gotten beyond it. Um, David Williams, Mr. absolutely brilliant man, uh, thank you for introducing me to the concept of a much larger, bigger picture making me think beyond the box. Uh, Mary Croft, 
uh, your, your input on trust got, got me going in that direction. And of course, Dean Clifford, on that, following up on that, I mean, without Dean Clifford and his concept of liability, I would have never got to these, these, these situations. Uh, Jordan Maxwell, with your ideas behind the words, the terms, what they're using, the, the different languages. Michael Tessarian, uh, your symbolism was, is absolutely amazing. David Icke, the, your presentation on a new world order and how it is all connected. Uh, 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 I got some friends out there that, that have helped do a lot of research. Uh, I, 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 they're the most important of all because without having people behind me, you know, supporting what I'm doing, I wouldn't be doing it, even though I'm angry all by myself. Um, uh, Jean Golrick, a friend of mine, uh, her, her ideas on the common law, even though I don't agree with all of them, you know, the common law was a big stretch for me. I had to get beyond that to get to where I am in today. So thank you. If I left anybody out, I, I apologize. But uh, these folks had presentations that, that made all the difference in the world for me. Now that said, I'm going to just clean it up with, with the last thing is I do all my research, everything. This is Black's Law 5th edition. I don't care what edition you use, but I use Black's because it was from 1979. A lot of changes have happened since then, but this seems to be central. It works the best for me. So Black's Law 5th edition. Here's what I want to explain about Black's Law as opposed to all the other so-called law dictionaries. Number one, Bouvier's, uh, Ballantine's, all that stuff. <clears throat> Those are law books. We're not talking about law in America. Within the United States, the parameters of the United States, there is no law. It's, it's a private legal system. The Department of Justice has its own language. It's based upon the, 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 the attorney guild uh, established back in 1355 or what have you, but it is a guild, and that guild has its own language. In fact, the Black Law book is a book of spells, black being, well, the book of death. Why is it a book of death? Because it's a, uh, it, it only applies to dead persons, not living man or woman. So it is the book of the dead, but it's a magical book where words are not what they seem. Where something such as the, the combination of words true copy make the word true untrue. Uh, if you, again, if you have a Black's Law, look up true copy. So any of you have any, 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 uh, any documents from your county recorder where they're certified? If they say true copy... They mean untrue. You need to look that stuff up, folks. Um, so I suppose, well, you know what? I got, I got some books in front of me. Let me just get this stuff out of the way, too, because a lot of people ask me what type of books you should be reading. And again, you have to have an open mind on this stuff. If you don't, none of this stuff will make sense. I, uh, some of the books that, that I've been working through are Gilbert's uh, Law Summaries on Trust and on Contracts. It's important. You got the history of the American Bar, that's huge. It gives you, it gives you how all this stuff got put in place. And, and along with the American Bar, you got the Uniform Probate Code and Uniform Trust Code from West Publishing. It's, I, it's my favorite because it explains how their court system is working against you. The Common Law by Oliver Wendell Holmes. Again, if you understand what was being done in the late 1800s, you'll know how it all fits together now. The Commentaries by Blackstone. You'll see how it all fits together by using Blackstone. The thing that, here's a book that just started it all off for me, was the essay on the early history of the law merchant by William Mitchell. That's when I realized that all of the system in place, the Department of Justice, is the law merchant court system. It is private. It's pure commerce. And there is no law in America. <clears throat> Some of my favorite books early on were The Politics of Obedience by uh, Etienne Delaboiti, and that is where... Uh, what ATN is talking about is the fact that all of the stuff that's happening to us today uh, is ultimately by our consent. And we can actually change it via a withdrawal of our consent as well. Um, perspectives on the Uniform Commercial Code by Douglas Litowitz and Mastering Secure Transactions, Article, or Article 9 of the UCC by uh, Richard Nawaka explains, it'll actually, you'll see how these things all come together, the Uniform Commercial Code. Um, <clears throat> an Introduction to Roman Law by Barry Nicholas. Just in a short period of time I've had this, you'll, you'll get the, the gist of what the civil rule book is for Americans, even though they're not truly Americans, they're U.S. citizens by, by franchise. But the Introduction to the Roman Law, this is probably the best, most simplest, I should say, version of the Roman Law system that we're living under. Law of Nations, obviously, but my favorite one is this one here. Or this is Vettel, but it also has explanations along the sides, so you can see where you're going fairly quick. 
<clears throat> what else do I have here? This is probably a, a little more damaging. This is from 1845. This is a treatise on the practice of the High Court of Chancery. Um, you can get this at Google Docs. Uh, it's about 500 pages, but I'll tell you what, when you're reading through this, everything that I, I'll be speaking about today is pretty much laid down in this. This is like an outline of what's going on. <coughs> the Deliberate Dumbing Down of America by uh, Charlotte Iserby. If you really want to know what the public schools have been doing over the last X number of years and what why they were designed, get a copy of this. Again, email me at uh, walkthetalk.us at gmail.com if you want. I can't provide this, but I can actually send you a downloadable version of this. Finally, I would suggest that people that, that uh, want to know, want to see this stuff in action, obviously you've heard of the Matrix. Sadly, most people think the Matrix is something beyond this. No, it's very simple. Uh, the Matrix is their, us providing energy through our labor for a private commercial system, a UCC system that's, that's actually owned and operated by the Bank of England. And we know where that goes. Truman Show. Probably one of the best versions of, of a man in the house that you could possibly find. In fact, it's so obvious that he gets out of the house. It's actually a physical place in this movie, but this is a man that made a decision to get out of the house and not be basically tied or tethered to their private system. It took, basically, he had to be willing to give up his life to do it. It's a great movie. Stranger Than Fiction, another great movie. What, what these movies that I'm pointing out right now is showing the different. It, it's sort of the man and the person. The man and his commercial aspect. These are all movies that sort of explain that stuff, but you got to keep an open mind. Uh, one of my favorite is K-Pax. This is a very difficult, difficult one to understand, but when you realize what's going on in this movie, but you really do have to dig into this stuff, this movie is one of my favorites. It was a favorite before I knew what they were trying to tell me. <laughs> of course, for some of the guys in this room today, <laughs> Fight Club, if you, if you actually watch this movie and listen to what's being said in this movie, they're telling you basically how you should feel about what they're doing to you. These are just some of the movies um, that I've enjoyed and, and, and watched in many cases uh, more than four or five times to see the information that was being passed along. Of course, who owns Hollywood? The same people that own basically everything else in the, uh, I would say, the central banking world. The central banking world. Let's get started here. Um, will and Testament. The Will and Testament. <clears throat> you know, I should probably tell a quick story for everybody to understand that everything I'm gonna everything I'm gonna talk about today basically hinges around this simple story. Here's what's happening, what has happened to all of us, and has happened to everybody, ultimately since 1933. Since the New Deal, since the ultimate bankruptcy of the United States, where the international bankers, the Bank of England, have took control, or basically took ownership of the United States. So mom, your mom, your mom, your mom, all of your moms, Everybody. Mom goes into a hospital, a public hospital anywhere in America. Actually, mom goes into a hospital anywhere in the world where there's a central banking system. Mom goes into a hospital. The hospital is considered a public hospital, but it's also considered a charitable hospital. And a charitable hospital is also considered to be a foundling hospital. That's F-O-U-N-D-L-I-N-G. A foundling hospital. What's a foundling hospital? A foundling hospital is where children are abandoned by their maiden mothers to the state. They're given away to the state because the mother is considered a pauper and needs help by somebody. So every hospital is a charitable hospital in the world that has a central banking organization running it. Every charitable hospital is a foundling hospital where every child born within it is considered a foundling and abandoned to the state. What, what does that mean? That means that the child, <clears throat> here's the way it works. Mom goes into the hospital, abandons her child, the state picks up the child, legally adopts it through a legal process, not a lawful process, but a legal process, 
the state becomes the guardian over the child's estate and administrates over the child's estate until he's 18. At 18, the child should be able to take over administrative authority, but cannot because the child never takes responsibility for his estate, for his property, for his life. And because of that, the state continues to administrate for the man or woman at this point for the rest of the man or woman's life. That's what's happening. Also, the administrative authority, the entire system is probate, but the administrative authority is what we think is the court system in America, the Department of Justice. The Department of Justice, again, uh, is not a system of law, it's a system of commerce, and the Department of Justice is overseeing the administrative, uh, the, the authority, has the authority to administrate over every child born and has since 1933, the New Deal. So again, every man, woman, and child born in America since 1933 is considered to be an orphan. That orphan lives in a house called Congress. <coughs> that house has house rules. How many people have children? In, uh, okay, yeah. And of course, I mean, if, I don't, depending on how old they are, yeah. in your house, again, my dad said it, your dad said it, everybody's father said it at some point, maybe even some mothers, but what did they say? You live under my roof, you go by my rules. Well, in the House of Congress, where all of the abandoned children live, they have their own rules. What are those rules called? Public policy. So every man, woman, and child in America, they're all orphans living in an orphanage known as the United States, and, and, and the house of that orphanage is called the House of Congress, and Congress oversees or administrates the property of all of these orphans as well, and that's what we have going on here in America. By the way, um, for those of you patriots out there that think that you're voting for your jailers or for your administrators, you are not. You're considered to be a minority within the House. And remember, minors do not have legal, what? They don't have legal rights because they're underage. So since we're all considered minors, none of what we do, none of our actions are considered legal. Therefore, none of our actions have any, we have no input on what happens in the House. And remember also that the, it doesn't matter whether it's the left or the right, they're both the same management team. Inside the House, the Republicans and Democrats, including the Ron Pauls of the world, they're the same management team. That's the way it works. So, I want to tell that story because everything else from this point forward will make more sense. And if I start to get all jacked up, uh, Ron, just go ahead and turn off this, uh, <laughs> this camera. Oh, I'm going to talk about the will and the testament. I want everybody to understand what the will and the testament is because unless you understand this, you don't have a, you, there's no possible way to understand that they're in control of your life. What is the will? <clears throat> everybody thinks they know what the will is. Everybody thinks the will is an intention to do something or a desire. I, I, I wish, I will that to occur. I want that to happen. It is my will to, for that to happen. I told a story about, uh, I had some friends over the other day, three guys, three adults, sitting here in my house, and I do mean house, in my house, and we had about, I don't know, 14, 16 inches of snow out there. My driveway had not been plowed, shoveled, or anything else. So let's just get to the idea of the will. I'm looking down my driveway right now. There's 14 inches of snow on it. How many people actually believe it is my will or desire to have that plowed or shoveled? Well, who wouldn't? Everybody wants their driveway plowed or shoveled or cleaned off, correct? So is it my will that it is? No. My will has not been expressed. The driveway is not clean, therefore it is not my will at all. Let me explain that. Here is me. Let's just say it's me. The will, the will is, and all attorneys will agree with this, the will is land. 
That's what the will is. It's land. But is it earthly land, ultimately? No, it's not. The will, this is, this, is, this is a tough concept for most people, but the will is the land of your soul. It's the land of your soul. So, if it's the land of your soul, is it not your body, your physical body? The land, which is called the will, it is the land, this here is my will. This physical body that houses my soul, it's the house of the holy. You know what? There's movies out there. It's the chariot of the gods. This is, it's, it, this is what carries my divinity. This is the land of my soul. It's my physical body. So let's get back to the idea of my driveway. The driveway has 14 to 16 inches of snow on it. Is it my will to have it cleaned off? No. Why? In order for it to be my will to have that driveway cleaned off, I would have to physically pick up a shovel. I'd have to physically pick up a shovel. Go down there and shovel it off. My land would have to actually do something to make to be an expression of this land, I would have to physically do something. The, my will would only be expressed, that driveway would only be cleaned off if it truly were my will. My will is, an, is, is a physical action. My body has to do something in order for it to be evidence of my will. Again, a clean driveway is evidence that it were my will to have a clean driveway. I have to physically pick up a shovel with the land of my soul, go down there and shovel it off. Then, and only then, would that driveway be an expression of my will. How about this? If, if I get a summons to their private Department of Justice court system, and I show up, I don't want to show up, but I do. I don't want to participate, but I do. That my physical land of my soul, which is my will, my land <laughs> shows up in their private courtroom. Is it my will to be there? Absolutely. I mean, there's no possible way that I can say I don't want to be there when it is my will, the land of my soul, shows up there. How about if I, if I sign a document that they force me to sign? Is it my will to sign the document. Well, of course it is. I, don't, I can bitch and moan all I want, but is it my will to sign it? Of course it is. I got a pen in hand. That, that, that is in the hand. It's in the land. It's upon the land. And when I sign something with my signature, is that not an expression of my will? Absolutely. Can I deny it? No. What is, I mean, so, is it about a desire or a wish? No. It is evidence. Whatever this has done is evidence of my will. Okay. What is that evidence called? It's called testament. What do I mean by that? The clean driveway is testament or evidence of my will. I, I picked up with the land of my soul, a shovel, went down there and cleaned off the driveway. So the clean driveway is evidence of my will. We're going to call it product of, what's a better word? How about uh, fruit? Yeah, it's the produce. It's the product, the produce. It's the fruit of the soil of the land. It's whatever the land produces. So I, the land picks up, again, the land being of my soul, it is my will, I pick up a shovel, I clean off the driveway. A clean driveway is the fruit, evidence, of an act of my will. That fruit is also the fruit of my labor. Whether it's intellectual or physical, 
That is called property. The property is the testament of my will. It's the product. It is what I create. I created a clean driveway. That's the product of my will. It is also evidence of, of the actions of my will. So again, the will, the land of your soul, and the testament, the property or the result of that will, is what? It equals an estate. It equals the estate. The will and testament is your estate. Now here's what's, here's what's really tough for most Christians or religious folks to gather. Uh, this information is so difficult. Why? Because everybody knows that you are. God says that you're supposed to be the steward of what? Of your estate. He says his estate. But he, are you not directly a product of of God, ultimately? It doesn't matter what God is. I mean, I, I can't explain where anybody came from, so I'm just saying, we came from somewhere. So I'm not going to argue the point. We're supposed to be the stewards of our own estates. We're supposed to be 100% responsible for our land and our, our property. We're supposed to be the stewards of our will and testament. So what happened? Hey, I, I'm curious, how come everybody out there seems to think that somebody else should insure them or indemnify them for their actions of their will? I mean, don't you think that maybe we're, we're, we're bowing down to two gods, maybe, or two masters? How can you possibly uh, uh, believe that there's a God in heaven or whatever, and you're the steward of your estate, when you turn around and you expect something from the state, District of Columbia, the house, whatever you want to call it, how can you consider yourself the steward of your life? If somebody else is, what, managing it? How about insuring it? Anybody here got uh, automobile insurance? Really? So who's responsible for your driving? You or somebody else? If, it, if, you, if, if it's somebody else, you're not the steward of your life. If it's somebody else. Hey, how, how about if you, does anybody have insurance, life insurance? Or how about health insurance? Obamacare? Everybody, anybody fighting for that? How about Social Security? How about letting somebody steal your property throughout your life, but then, then blaming them that there's nothing there at the end, and thinking that maybe some other 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 year olds should be working to make sure they take care of your estate? Is there anybody here that, that actually is responsible for their life? <laughs> I, I just, I'm just, it's just a question. I, I, I can't see it. I mean, unless you're 100%, and I mean 100%. But what is, what is the United States doing right now? Making it impossible for anybody to be responsible. In fact, don't they tell you everywhere, I mean, you're irresponsible if you don't have insurance? They're telling you that you're irresponsible if you don't have insurance. I mean, how are you supposed to take care of your brothers and sisters? How are you, I mean, how can you possibly think that you're responsible if you don't have insurance? Well, let's just, let's just lay it out there. Insurance is irresponsible. If you have somebody else indemnifying your will and testament, I say that's the ultimate in irresponsibility. And you know what? You're serving another master anyway. I would say that the master at that point, your master is the state, not mine. <laughs> I'm out. But your master is the estate. Is, it, it is the, the estate known as the United States. The house known as Congress. That's your master. So I hope everybody got the idea that the will is the land of your soul and an act, whether it's through a pen, your hand, or a shovel. Anything that the land does is an act. It's evidence of the will. And the evidence, the outcome, going to work as a machine tool guy, a mechanic, it doesn't matter. Whatever you do intellectually or physically, the product of that will, of that labor, is yours to keep. Yours, nobody else's. So why is it that we, we for, for some reason, have to give up some huge percentage of it to some other master? Yeah, that's, that's, my, that's my question. Because we have allowed somebody else to take care of us. Again, remember what I said earlier. 
we are all orphans in their house. They did something in 1933 through FDR's New Deal to steal our will and testament from us. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, where, where, let's see, where should I go next? Okay, <clears throat> yeah, you in the back? Will you uh, not give the explanation and maybe the analogy of liability now? On the right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, liability, liability, I kind of tapped into that just a little bit. Liability is, okay, land. A farmer. A farmer, again, are we not the landholder here? It, 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 it's our will, it's our land. But let's just think of a real a farmer out there somewhere who has, I don't know, 40 acres, 400 acres, it doesn't matter. But he has a bunch of nice tractors. And a bunch of his buddies come over and start riding around on his tractors playing chicken. The landowner screams at his buddies, get the hell off there, somebody's going to get hurt. And one of his, his, his idiot buddies says, hey, who are you to tell me, you know, what to do? Well, here's the thing. The landowner, the property owner, can, t can tell these guys anything he wants, including get the hell off my property. Why? Because all liability, 100% of the liability lies with this man, the farmer. Why? Because he's the owner. All liability lies with the owner. The owner. So here's this man out there screaming at his buddies to get off the tractors because why? Somebody could get hurt. If somebody got hurt, who's liable for their injuries? Well, they're going to scream he is. Why? Because they're not going to take responsibility for their actions. They're going to say, hey, I was on your land. Liability is taking responsibility for your, your land and taking respons well, I mean, if you take responsibility for your land, you're also taking responsibility for the product of that land or the testament known as property. If you're driving down a road behind the wheel of a car, the man is behind the wheel. The car is the property of the man. If the, if the property runs over a mailbox across the street, who is responsible for getting the mailbox fixed? Well, the property is, is a, the product or testament. The car is a result of this, the, la, the labor of this land. So be, the car is, this, is the property. The property does damage to the mailbox. The owner of the property is liable for the damage. So, again, the property did the damage. The owner pays the damages. Why? Because he is 100% liable for his actions. The land, just like the farmer. Again, here's, but here's another part of liability. If you're 100% liable, who has the rights? 100% liability. If you're the only one with responsibility, the only one with liability, who has the rights? The only one with rights is the liable man or woman. With liability comes responsibility, but with liability comes the voice or the rights. Without responsibility, without liability, do you have any rights? No. In fact, if you insure the land, you have given up the rights. Why? Because you've given up the responsibility. If you insure it, you're letting somebody else indemnify those actions, so who has to pay in case something happens? The collective. All your brothers and sisters has to pay for your negligence. Why? Because you've let somebody else indemnify your land or your property, your testament. Liability is the most important thing we got going here. Thank you, uh, Dean Clifford, by the way. But liability is, with full liability, with full responsibility, comes the voice. Without the voice, you, I mean, without liability, you have no rights. You, what do you get? When you, when, in fact, when you insure yourself through... All state or 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 you know American family. I mean, when you insure yourself, what happens? You're letting somebody else be responsible. But those that are responsible then have what? The rights to tell you what to do. You lose your rights the moment you you give up liability. In fact, you lose all rights the moment you give up liability. When you want somebody else to do something for you, they have the voice. Do you have a question? That's it. Uh oh, where was I? <laughs> okay. 
I hope everybody has this idea, because if you can't understand that the will... And the attorneys, isn't it amazing? I'm going to close with just this on this segment. Isn't it funny that you don't ever hear the word testament anymore? Why don't you hear the word testament anymore? Because in 1933, they took all the property away from the masses to do what? Basically insure the international banks of, of their, what, debt. 14th Amendment corporate citizen status. You only hear the word will. Why? Because there is no testament. All property rests in the state. Look, ask the Senate where all property rests. So you go to work every day and you produce things, fruit, of your labor, and who gets to keep it? The state gets to keep it. You'll never hear the word testament come out of any attorney's mouth. Because there isn't any property for you to... You're, you're, there are no heirs anymore because all of the people live in under one roof, the house. So all property rests in the state, which is also the House of Congress. There is, you, you, don't, you, don't, you can't inherit anything. Nothing leaves the house. 1935, I'm trying to think of... Uh, there's a Senate report out there that talks about all property resting in the states. It's not my, these are not my words. Anyway, so I hope everybody has this. Um, will and testament is the most important thing, period. It is the most important thing. If you don't have the idea that your will is your body and, and, and the testament is the fruit, the, the outcome, the produce, the property of this body, nothing else will make sense. Everything stems upon this. Um, all right. This segment I'm going to do, the law merchant, I want people to understand how important, I want people to understand what, what the Department of Justice is and the fact that it is by our consent, by our will, an act of our will. Hopefully everybody understand, or have watched the, the previous part. But here's, let, let's just get into this. I'm going to try to keep these segments as, as, as short as possible. This is, this is sort of along the, the, the Dean Clifford, thanks Dean, the Dean Clifford line. I want people to understand what this is. So I'm going to draw the, the little triangles. And this is the king. Okay? This is the hand of the king. And this is the subjects of the king, or his kingdom. Okay? <clears throat> the king, the king's hand, and the subjects. Let me read something out of, uh, I don't know if, if this is, is this an HBO, what is this, uh, the Game of Thrones? Anybody watching this? I don't watch TV, but a, a good friend of mine gave me the, the DVDs, but I picked up the book because that's what I do. Let me explain the, king, the king's hand. The king interfaces with his realm, with his kingdom, through his hand. Now, remember what the hand is when you think of the will. The hand is still connected to the body, is it not? The will is an expression of the king. Now, the king's out there doing kingly things. He's out there hunting, fishing, wenching, whatever kings do when, when the kings are doing them. But back at the ranch, so to speak, back in, in, in the castle, the king has a hand that he has appointed. The hand of the king speaks for the king while he's out. Here's what they, this, this is the king's hand. The hand of the king was the second most powerful man in the kingdom. He spoke with the king's voice, commanded the king's armies, drafted the king's laws. At times, he even sat on the throne to dispense king's justice when the king was absent, sick, or otherwise indisposed. That's what the hand of the king is. So when the king was doing what kings want to do, the hand of the king was doing what the king needed to do. And again, the hand interfaced with what? The realm, the king's king, the kingdom. Well, here's what our system actually looks like. Very similar. This is where, unfortunately, most patriot idiots get, get lost. This is a sovereign. This is the executor. This is the persons. 
Okay. The king and the sovereign are synonymous. It's the same situation. The sovereign, again, is, has his own kingdom. In fact, didn't I just go over the will? This is the land of your soul. Are you not the king of this land? Absolutely. This is, this is your... You're supposed to be the steward of this land. You're supposed to be the sovereign over this land. You're the king of this land. And the only and, and, and the way you interface with the what? The outside world, the public, so to speak, is through an executor. The sovereign interfaces through the voice. Again, it's no different than up here. The sovereign has an executor that inter interfaces with the public. Now, how does he do it? Through his actions, through his hand, through his signatures. But it's still the hand of the king. The executor is the hand of the king. And the thing is, is that what is the executor protecting? What is the executor overseeing? The persons in the public realm. Just like the subjects here, the hand oversees, the executor oversees the persons. The executor only oversees fictions. He does not oversee men and women. But the sovereign can deal directly. The man or woman, the living, breathing man, deals directly with other living, breathing men or women. Does not deal through the executor to with other men or women. This is where a handshake, land of the soul, hand of the soul, when the hand of the souls meet, that is called a contract. In their world, between an executor and their persons, it's called the law of contracts. It is not a contract as we know it. So when Two sovereigns deal, they can actually go do deals directly by their hands, which are the lands of their soul. When you have to interface with the commercial realm or the public, you have to do it through signatures, through contracts, through forms. That's the only way it works. So again, these are basically, you could overlay this to this, and we're the kings of our existence. We need to start acting kingly. We need to start actually expressing ourselves as kings. Now here we go. This is going to be difficult for most people, but I said this is about the law merchant. Now when did the, when did the Department of Justice come into play? I'm going to call this the Department of Justice. 1870. Okay. The law merchant. What is the law merchant? The law merchant is the court of commerce. The court of commerce. Does the court of commerce exist without the cons does it exist without the consent of the king? Absolutely not. Here we go. This line represents land. It represents the king's land. I'm going to say the kingdom of the sovereign or the king. It doesn't matter how you want to look at it. I prefer king because people actually, when they think of the word sovereign, they think of stupid things. Because there aren't any sovereigns. If you live under somebody's roof, are you a sovereign? No. If you're participating in the House of Congress, whether through voting or taking benefits, are you a sovereign? No. If you're using their currency to do whatever, are you a sovereign? Absolutely not. But let's get beyond that. Sorry, I was going off on a tangent. So this is the land. This is a, this is a realm. This is the, the king's realm. It's his land. And the king has his own what? The law, the law. The king has his own law. And it's law. It's not legal. It's law. It's a system of law. It's his own system. It's whatever he wants it to be. So this is the king's land, and it has its own laws. You know what? laws. We rule our own realms, and until we realize that, we're going to be in trouble. Here's what's interesting. Back in the 1000s, 1100s, 1200s, another system was created. Actually, it was probably around a lot longer than that, but I'm going to just go back there. Well, here's the thing. Even Let's go back to the times of, of the kings that we know of, the British kings, or what have you. In 1100, 1200, what would happen maybe once or twice a year, 
vendors, merchants, commercial people would come into the realm, the kingdom, the kingdom, the le uh, and, and get a walk upon the land of the king. This is the physical land now. They would come into the kingdom and they would ask permission. They would try, they would get the consent of the king to do what? Set up their stores, set up their markets, set up their fairs. And so the king, if he wanted to, he would allow them to set up their fairs. Why wouldn't he? I mean, they brought in dinnerware, uh, you know, all maces, you know, all kinds of fun things. Uh, clothing, uh, uh, food, all different things from all over the world. So here, the king allows the vendor to set up his tent. That tent was where the vendors had to stay. But it was upon the king's land. Now this land had its own system of law. It's the king's law. But within this tent, this merchant tent, the merchants created their own system of what? Justice. It's not law, it's justice. When you speak of justice, you're talking about merchants. Commercial. Where the, where the merchants themselves made decisions amongst themselves. So, this is the law merchant system of justice. Isn't it funny? If you go into your own courtrooms and things like that now, they're not, they're, they're not even calling the buildings. All the new buildings, aren't they justice centers? Where did the word law go? Where did the word law go? In fact, to go off on a tangent real quick, why is it that you can't find an attorney that is a lawyer? Why can't you find, in fact, all attorneys are what? At law. Because they only go up to the door of, in fact, think about it. All attorneys practice within the commercial system. For who? The attorney's guild, that's G-U-I-L-D, like I said earlier. So the attorneys only practice within their commercial justice law merchant system. All attorneys are a member of the bar, which is part of the crown temple, but all attorneys work within this tent, this commercial tent. And the king has to allow this commercial tent to exist by his consent. Well, when you do walk into one of their commercial courtrooms, so-called, you're leaving the land of the king where you have all the rights where you are, where the law is your law, and you go into their tent, into their realm, and the moment you're in the tent is the moment you give up your rights. When you are in their room, and as the king, as the sovereign, and when that man with the black robe comes in there, and they say, all rise, and the king stands... For that man, that is conduct. Conduct showing the king, consenting to the authority of this system. If you're silent, that's called tacit agreement. If the king is silent when he's summonsed, if he does nothing, the silence is consent. If he doesn't respond, remember, if his will, his physical body, whether it's through a signature or conduct, he can put himself inside this law merchant system. Now what I'm going to explain next is that actually our real struggle is, is much deeper than this. I want people to understand that there's two systems going on. This is law, which America doesn't have anymore. This is justice. Established in 1870, for the commercial persons created in 1868 through the 14th Amendment, commercial citizen status. 1870, right two years after the 14th Amendment. So, again, if you, you, you need to understand the simplicity of this. You need to understand this, realize that you're the king which is the sovereign, I don't like that word because it doesn't make sense in most cases. 
This is the land of the king where all of you people rule until you voice or through your conduct or through an act of your will create or allow or consent to this justice system known as the law merchant. Now, it's been around for a long time. So again, um, anybody have any questions real quick? Because this, this is important, but I, you need to know that, that the system, the Department of Justice, is not law. This is law, your law, your law, your law, everybody's law, until they do what? They consent to allow the merchants upon their land. And when that man in that, that again, that black robe, addresses you or calls you by a name to a person, which is a subject, once he does that, you're inside their private justice system. It's as simple as that. There are no laws in there. That's why it doesn't look like it. The common law is not in here. The common law is here. Well, remember too, though, that the common law is the king's law. It ain't your law. The king's law is, well, I'd say the king of England. It's British law. But nevertheless, common, the common law is outside of this tent. It's outside of this tent. It's still the king's law. So, uh, sorry folks, if you're in there battling, talking about the Constitution or common law issues, they don't exist for us anymore. I was, I'm going to leave you with this. <clears throat> the birth certificate, or the certificate of live birth, automatically puts you into this position. That's what we're going to go talk about next. So I just want to, I, the thing is, is that we can't stop what's going on. Because the birth certificate automatically put us in this commercial tent, this justice system. In fact, the 14th Amendment, the 14th of 1868, made this Department of Justice law merchant system necessary because why? In 1862, they redefined person to a corporate status. In 1864, they defined the state to mean what? District of Columbia. They put all new persons inside the District of Columbia through the 14th Amendment, which is commercial realm, and the Department of Justice was put in place to oversee and act as the commercial system necessary. Because persons are commercial, and commerce is adjudicated inside the merchant courtroom, not by the law of the land. Okay, I'm done with this one. Um, any questions real quick? How would, you, um, how would you explain someone who maybe doesn't have a birth certificate or a certificate of live birth? Do they still fall under that tent? <clears throat> Sadly, yes. Um, in 1933, which is about what, four generations ago? About every 20 years is a generation. About four, in 1933, about four generations ago, that starting point, if your parents were married, they were civilly married, and civil marriage created a personhood status, persons are in here. If you don't have a birth certificate or you were not born in a foundling hospital, which I explained earlier, you're still, because it's been four generations, you're probably still the product or issue, um, uh, you're the product of a business relationship called mother and father. And because of that, a person was created uh, or issued, and that issue called a birth certificate. Everybody has one, whether they want to believe it or not. The state doesn't give a rip about what you think or whether what you're trying to get out of. The state has an agenda. The state is the District of Columbia. The United States is the one that's actually making it happen through their commerce system, but yeah, there's no real, I, it's hard to say this, but there is nobody, it's been four generations, you know, you get captured by civil marriage, you get captured by um, signing up for a social security card, you get captured by working in their system. Every mm -hmm. single one of these, voting. what's that? Voting. Voting, yeah, registering <clears throat> to vote automatically, but in fact, that's an interesting thought, thank you. Registering to vote. Now, I say in 1933, through the birth certificate, through the New Deal, 
they captured everybody and put them via commerce by tying or strapping this commercial, this franchise commercial U.S. citizenship. It's a corporate citizenship. It's not an Article, or, you know, it's not an Article Four uh, citizenship. You know, through the Constitution, which, <coughs> which is garbage too. But um, no. But in, in 1870, what else did they do? They, the 15th Amendment came in. So there's the 14th. The 15th Amendment was what? The right to vote. In what? In their private system. So when the blacks supposedly were freed, they were given citizenship under the 14th Amendment, but then everybody, not just the blacks, but everybody had the right now to do what? Register to vote, but for what system? For the, the commercial system, the United States, while well, the one that won the Civil War, because the North and the South, if you guys saw Season of Treason 1, you know that the North and the South were defeated by the bankers of the United States. The United States created this new system, which was what? A democracy that was outside of the republic, so-called. So, -called. so you, what did you have to register to vote for? The legislative democracy that was established by the bankers. So, you're, you, you, do you have? To, did you ever have to register as a citizen to participate in the system prior to that? Absolutely not. So, voters' registration, the Fifteenth Amendment, is what captured people right after, uh, or in 1870. So, we didn't have to wait until 1933 to be captured by the system. We volunteered into the system, this system, in 1870 with the Fifteenth Amendment. And what they, they, made it, they made us want to participate in their system through their lies and deception. There's just no other way to say it. So, even without a birth certificate, if you wait till you're 18 years old, uh, as of 1870, you could have registered to become part of the system as well. So I think that now we're talking about how many generations since 1870. You know, everybody, everybody <coughs> born in America is in this commercial system, whether it's through the 14th Amendment, through voter's registration, or any combination of anything. Yeah, because after 1870, everybody that registered to vote, they were a person. Right. If you registered to vote for their legislative democracy, you created a person, a commercial person, a commercial aspect, that was adjudicated in their court of commerce. Which was also established in the department called the Department of Justice in 1870. So yeah, there's I, I don't know there's I, there's just no way out of this. I mean there, there there wasn't, but I mean this is this is diabolical stuff. Yeah. Uh, saying if you were not your family or your genealogy wasn't through uh, since the 15th Amendment, if you were a registered immigrant or of some other recognized foreign nationality, would that still place you? That's a great question too. Okay, so now the question was, if you're an immigrant, a registered immigrant, what happens to you then? Well, then you become, what? An alien resident. Again, a resident is the key word. You become an alien resident, but a resident to what? To this system. You register your family <laughs> into, sl into slavery. But the registration uh, to become a resident, even if it's a resident alien, still puts you directly into this commercial system because the resident alien is actually a person that you create through what? Your will, an act of your will through what? The signature of your hand, which is this. Your hand is actually the executor, but you're actually creating a person that now is in their system as what? A resident alien. Not to take it too far off course, but the resident alien got here somehow, say, let's say, maybe the Amish. And so, as you see now, they're actually still taking benefit by playing around inside what you were saying with the central banking, which is also them using money or currency on the public side. And also, this is probably why there's a whole stronger attack to go and kill, let's say, Iranians and take Iranians over as opposed to what's happening with, um, you know, let's say the Amish. Well, they're, the Amish, sadly. And also, I think the other thing is, is this, this has always been the same system. I don't want to go too far off track from here, but this has always been the same system. And so, 
the uh, contracting that's going on back and forth from the time they're still they were inhabitants on the land, but they're still falling under what the king had set up here. Now it's just an evolved process of a better way to do business. So there was never any kind of freedom, let's say. Oh, no, no. Oh, okay, that's all I wanted to no. get you to speak on, maybe. No, I mean, prior to this even, remember that in, what, 1214 or 1215, you know, the king of England gave up, because he wanted his soul to go to heaven, he gave his kingdom to the Vatican. The Vatican has laid claim to all this stuff. I mean, has laid claim to anything that Great Britain has laid claim to. They're the management team for the Vatican. That's all that Great Britain, even the Bank of England, is basically, or the, uh, the Crown Temple, they're, they're, they're the Vatican's bankers. I mean, I, again, we, we should do, yeah, maybe this isn't my last video, but th we should do something on that, but no, you're exactly right. You can't go and get out of their commercial system and not go from the fire to the frying pan, or the frying pan to the fire. Because you can't exit their, their commercial system just to go back into an inhabitant sta status or whatever you want to call yourself, because even an inhabitant within that system is under the canon law of the Vatican. So you can't get out of this to go into, you know, a union state status or getting back to the Republic. No, oh, no, no. You can't do that. That's not even a possibility. Because why? Because a Republic, which was created, even a Constitution, even the Northwest Ordinance or any of that garbage, you know what? It's all claimed by the Vatican. And always has been. Vatican says, you know, they're, you got the Vicar of Christ, and they're laying claim to all the lands. What are the lands, by the way, that they're... I mean, here's what's interesting. Wherever you go is their lands. They're not laying claim, because they know, even on a religious, the religious side of this, man, am I getting off track, but even on a religious side, they're not laying claim to the earth. They're laying claim to your will and your testament. That is the land that they're laying claim to. So wherever you go, you go to, I don't know, Ireland or, or England or Switzerland, wherever you are, is the land the Vatican is laying claim to. It's not underfoot. The land, the land that they're claiming is your existence, your will. That's what they're, they're claiming. And how are they claiming it? By your consent. That's how they're claiming it. We're, in fact, our actions, this is one of my favorite statements, your, let your actions speak so loudly, nobody can hear what you're saying. What does that mean? It means that this is showing your will. I mean, the fact that you're not doing, I'm not voting, that's an act of my will. I'm not participating in the system. It's, you know, voting, pulling that lever, doing anything through this is your will. Again, I'm getting off track on this, but yeah, absolutely. You can't get out of this and be free. You have to get out of this and not be part of even the Republic or anything, the Union States or any of that garbage, because all of that was established by either the Virginia Land Company, which was still claimed, by the Vatican in 1214. So no, there is no hit out of this. Not like that. You gotta, you gotta escape all of it. You gotta become this. You gotta become this. You gotta get outside of their society, outside of their house. You gotta get outside of it in order to be free of it. So, um, what's next here? Yeah, this next one's gonna be pretty big. So, yeah, let's just stop here for a minute. Here we go. Above this line is the fictional world. It's the fictional world. Below it is the living, breathing, flesh and blood world. <clears throat> I want you to realize that there are mirror images throughout. Mother is mom. This is the fictional realm. Mother is mom. Partner is wife. Parent is woman. Idea is being. Character is child. Title his name and property is land and, and land. They're not mirror images here. Here we go. <clears throat> the story I said up front. Mom goes into a hospital. Here's exactly what's happening. Two entities are created when mom goes into this foundling hospital. Mom is part is, is her, her partner is dad. Let me, you know what? Let's just I'll make this easy. I'm gonna do just the fictional realm first. Is that alright? Okay, let's do that. <clears throat> Here's the way it works. This is the fictional realm. Mother, by the way, Black's Law applies to everything up here. 
Everything down here is what we believe. This is the world we live in. This is our physical bodies. Up here is the fictional realm. Boxes. What about intercourse? Not, uh, no, I'll get to that. Okay. So this is the fictional realm. Mother is a legal term through Black's Law. Mother and father, another fictional characterization. They're both persons. They're persons. Legal persons. <clears throat> Mother and father... Is, am I okay over here? Mother and father go through a civil or legal marriage. They become partners. They become partners. <clears throat> Business partners, actually. <clears throat> they, and, and when they... Everybody loves this, and, and you know, I hope nobody smiles at this other than me. When the two partners have intercourse, that's in Black's Law, it's considered business. Intercourse with partners in the fictional realm is business. <clears throat> these partners then become parents. How? Because these parents conceive of an idea through what's called information. Let me back up a little bit on information. When mom goes into the hospital, you know what, I, I have this stuff. Mom goes into the hospital, you know what, pause this. Just pause it real quick. Let me do something. Sorry about that, I had to run downstairs and uh, pick up the actual documentation. A buddy of mine about a little over a year ago had a, a baby girl in one of these hospitals, but and he refused to get a birth certificate, which is great, but here's the, here's when the parents are in the hospital, in fact, I should just say, the information, let's go there. The information, what does that mean? Parents conceive of an idea through information. They're in the hospital. <clears throat> the hospital hands them paperwork to fill out. This is the actual paperwork at a hospital in Illinois. The paperwork says certificate of live birth. Now, it's funny because the very first term, legal term at the top of this paperwork, says informant. What they're doing is, this is information for statistical purposes only. Information. If you understand anything about information, information is what is required in their legal system. If you haven't looked up already the history of the Illinois Attorney General, you have to look up that website. If, 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 if you understand that they, re, they require information, can I have that real quick? Thank you. Information is everything in their system. So here, let me finish up this idea first. The parents conceive, conception, conceive of an idea through information. This is information. It even says it's information. But what is, what is this information? <clears throat> it's the child's information. The mother's information. Information for administrative purposes. The father's information, the certifier's information, um, the residents, all the stuff imaginable that they need to create what? This is what this information is called later on. This information in their world creates what they call uh, a composition. It's like a new, a, a new little book, a story, but it's a composition that creates a new character. The character has all kinds of attributes. The character is the subject matter of the composition. The name of the composition is its title. The title is the name of the new character. That new character is also the subject matter, again, of this information. So the new subject matter title is handed to what? A hospital administrator. The hospital administrator takes this composition and does what? The character that's created in this, again, remember, we, mom, hands this to the administrator at the hospital. The administrator also, remember, there's a registrar involved. But the administrator does something really crazy with this information. Well, you'll see how this works out now. So the parents conceive of an idea through information. What is the idea? It's a new character. 
Who is the character? What is the character? It's the subject matter of this composition, this information. What is the subject matter of this composition? It is the title. What is the title? It's the name of the new character. Who is the character? Well, in your case, it was you. In my case, the new character that was created through this composition, this information, was Curtis R. Kallenbach. Curtis R. Kallenbach became the title to this subject matter piece of information. I'm, that Curtis R. Kallenbach is a new character that was created, which obviously is a new person created in their system. Now the title then goes on to become a birth certificate. It goes on to become a birth certificate. So the information provided by the what? Well, let's just look at it. The parent, through conception, creates an idea through the information. A new character is created. How do they get this information? How is this given to the hospital administrator? By the hand of mom, of mother. Mother, sorry. The hand of mother gives that information to the hospital administrator. So the parents conceive of a new idea through the information provided or the, the paperwork provided by the hospital and then the mom delivers this information by her hand. Now we already spoke about the hand. What is the hand? It's part of the will. So by the will of the mother is the delivery of a new character. Mom, mother hands this information to the administrator. The administrator accepts it. So it's delivered to the administrator, a new character is created, and here's what's funny. <clears throat> a new title, the title is the name of the new character. That title is then what? It is announced, another legal term, it is announced into the public realm. The public realm, the fictional realm. How? Well, for those of us that have had kids, what happens? What does the administrator do? She calls the newspaper and has the name published, put into the public by an announcement. <coughs> it's a birth announcement. What are they, what's, the, what's being birthed? A new issue. What is the issue? Ultimately, it's a birth certificate, but what, what, what is it? So they announce the name, Curtis R. Kallenbach, into the public. And 90 days later, according to Gilbert's law summaries on, 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 on contracts, 90 days passes, but when we have our name, when, when a child... Is, when his or her name is published into the newspaper, aren't we thrilled? My God, there's bouncing baby boy, bouncing baby girl. You know, look at, look at my, my child's name is in, the pipe, is in the paper. What are they doing? What is the United States doing? Remember I said earlier that these are foundling hospitals. Children are abandoned to the state. By having the name of the, the title of this new character put into the public realm, if mother does not claim that name, that title... What does it become? It's in a public domain now. Abandoned. This is now, this character, this title is abandoned into the public. Nobody's laid claim to it. So who picks it up? The state. The state picks up the title, the name, and does what with it? The state does something really ugly. The state starts, the state actually creates a title, an original title to it, but then starts making through what's an, 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 an old British term called a copy hold, they start stamping out copies of this title. Copies. Everybody here has a copy of this title on a vehicle in their wallet. What is that vehicle called? Driver's license. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Most people think the vehicle's the thing with the wheels outside. <laughs> no, sorry folks. The vehicle is the license. It is it is the piece, it is a little piece of plastic form with the title on it and the likeness, the make and model of the vehicle or of the, uh, of the subject. What is it? It's a, it's a picture of you. It's a picture of you. It is Character. a copy. It is a title. That's the vehicle. But anyway, I'm getting off track. The, the, the state is now creating copies of this title to do what? Make money with it. To make money with it. 
They create a birth certificate, which is a one share piece of stock in the United States, which does what? Well, it puts you into the U.S. citizenship realm. It's a commercial person. It's a one share stock, which makes it what? A minor issue. A minor what? Shareholder. But what else does it do? It straps you to their public policy. The U.S. citizenship is a corporate franchise that is then collectively naturalized into the United States. And this is only a copy of a title. The title. I mean, the U.S. citizenship is a title. It is just another copy that was created off of this situation. This is where all of you 14th Amendment folks out there that are, that are saying, that are talking about the 14th Amendment, <laughs> you're so far off base, I can't believe it. The 14th Amendment is just one copy. It is one title. It is one issue. It is one of hundreds, if not thousands, that have a title attached to it. Well, it ultimately looks like your name, but it is just a title. And it all is generated off of the birth certificate idea. <clears throat> but ultimately, let's remember I talked about the estate earlier today. Well, here's the thing. This title, here's little baby boy or baby girl. This title is the first piece of property. Mom created this title and gave it to the son or daughter. To gave, gave it to this character, it is the first piece of property in the character's life. And it's called the testament, remember. So the property, the title, is the child's first piece of property within the child's estate. If you don't get this stuff, remember, who created this? Mom, her mother did. Mother did through her hand, which means she did it through her will. It, she didn't have to fill out anything and call it a will. It was her will. An act through her hand is an act of her will. you got to get this stuff, folks. All right, now let's go. That's the fictional realm. A lot of nasty stuff comes out of this. The IRS attaches to this title. You know what? What's amazing about this title? This certificate of title, it's a birth certificate here, but this certificate of title in that law merchant court system, they need, they need a document in front of them, a certificate of title. They need a piece of property of yours to do what? Create the trust, to construct a trust around. Without this property in that man with the, the black robe, without this piece of property in front of him, they have nothing. They're constructing their trusts around a certificate of title that was created by the hand of mother. The hand of mother. It was delivered by the hand of mother to the hospital administrator. It was abandoned by mother because she never reclaimed this character's title from the state. Just like a DBA. Anybody that has a business out there, if you don't, I mean, when you announce the, the idea of the name of your company into the public, if nobody claims it, don't you get to use it? That's exactly what the United States is doing. Nobody claimed this title after it was announced. All right, baby boy. Nobody claimed it. So the state claimed it. The child, this, uh, this character was abandoned to the state and adopted by the state legally. The title is the property ultimately of the child. Here, let's go to the other side now. Oh, wait a minute. You know what? Thank you. I'm going to use this real quick. I said that information, remember the parent conceives of, the, of an idea through information, that hospital information. This is uh, a little bit of the uh, history of the Illinois Attorney General. I want you to see how important the concept of information is. The powers generally understood to belong to the Attorney General at common law have been summarized as follows. First, to prosecute all actions necessary for the protection and defense of the property and revenues of the Crown. That's, that's, that's number one. Two, by information to bring certain classes of persons accused of crimes and misdemeanors to trial. Three, by, by Skyer Fascists to revoke and annul grants made by the Crown improperly or when forfeited by the grantee thereof. Six, or four, by information to recover money or other chattels or damages for wrongs committed on the land 
or other possessions of the crown. Remember, this is the crown temple. This is the crown bank. This is the Bank of England. This is the Bank of England that's holding what? All the reins on the United States because of the bankruptcy of 1933. <clears throat> it goes on and on. But here's the, here's the last one I'm going to read. By information and chancery to enforce trusts and to prevent public nuisances and the abuse of trust powers. Everything in their system requires information. That birth certificate, this information that the hospital's asking for from mother, is nothing but information. Child's information, information by, for st statistical purposes only, mother's information, in information for administrative purposes, father's information. Yes? On uh, number four there, what land are they talking about? Okay, I'm going to read this over again. Number four out of the history of, of the US, or Illinois Attorney General. Number four says, By information to recover money or other chattels or damages for wrongs committed on the land. This is the land, folks. This is the will. This is, they're, they're only, whenever anybody talks about land in their system, they are not talking about land underfoot. They are talking about your physical body, which is your will. It's always that. And everything happens by our actions, by our consent. It's our actions that prove what our will is. <clears throat> There's so much in here. You really, you really do need... Oh, by the way, here's one. By proceedings in REM to recover property to which the Crown may be entitled... <laughs> Uh, by forfeiture for treason and property for which there is no le other legal owner, well, it was abandoned to the state, other legal owner, uh, such as Rex or treasure trove. Think about this. What's a treasure trove? It's an abandoned, what, vessel? Or, or it's, 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 it's potential found by somebody. Isn't this, isn't my energy, isn't my testament, the fruit of my labor, isn't the fruit of my labor... Like the, finding the golden goose? I mean, if, I, if I'm super productive, think about Bill Gates. This man intellectually builds this multi, multi-billion dollar organization. But everything, because he has a birth certificate, all of his fruits are subject to their system. Because of this. Because of mom. Or because of mother. None of us own anything. All of our property is, it rests in the state. Just ask the Senate. They'll tell you. Thanks for this. Um, so let's go down to the living, breathing realm. Remember, these are both happening at the same time. They're happening at the same time. Mom and Dad, these aren't characters. These aren't, these aren't fictional persons. These are the, 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 the living, breathing, loving <clears throat> male and female. But Mom, the wife, as opposed to partner, and, and this is not a civil marriage, ultimately. This is, a law, this is a lawful couple. I mean, some people would say that it's a... What is it? I mean, when a couple cohabitate for X number of years. Common law marriage or whatever. All right. When, the, when these two have intercourse, it would actually be considered sex between a male and a female. That is intercourse. For, uh, for, the, for the folks up here, for the, the persons up here, it's business. Down here, it's sex. So intercourse, here's what's interesting. When this woman... Conceives. She doesn't conceive through information. She conceives through fertilization. So the woman conceives through fertilization with a living, breathing man. And what does she conceive? A living, breathing being. Not an idea. She conceives of a being. How does she deliver the being? Thank you, Jordan Maxwell. She delivers the being, delivers the being through what? Her water. So the fiction delivers an idea through her hand, whereas the woman, the living, breathing, flesh and blood woman, delivers the being, the living, breathing being, through her water. And what is she, what is this being? What is she actually delivering? A child. Uh, look at this. Two separate entities. This is all running parallel. The character and the child. The child has a name, Curtis Richard Kallenbach. Curtis Richard Kallenbach is then what? Announced into the public. But mom, just like mother and dad, sadly, what did they fail to do? 
They fail to claim the child. The child is then considered what? Abandoned. Abandoned vessel? I don't know. Could, could the child become a treasure trove? <laughs> the child is abandoned to the state. The state picks up the child, basically, legally adopts a child into the state's family. What is the state's family? Where does the state's family reside? Congress, ultimately. But, but see, the child is a ward of the courts. The child then, just like this other character, the child is stuck until 18 years old, having its life administrated over by the same court system. Because the child is abandoned, the child has a guardian appointed to the child, and that guardian is no, is no longer mom and dad. That guardian, is it, it, hopefully everybody understands the idea of parents patrie. Parents patrie is the new parent of this child. This child's family, and I mean family, lives, they all live together. It, in one big happy family called U.S. citizenship. Anyway, that child is, is subject. But anyway, the child has a name. Now it's interesting because the, the living, breathing child has a certificate of live birth. The title has a, a birth certificate. The birth certificate is not possible without the certificate of live birth. If there's not a live birth, there is none of, there, none of this exists. Until the, until the child is born and named, the title can't be, be created for this birth certificate person. Finally, and, and, and hopefully everybody watched the other part of this, the child has what? A will. What is the child's will? The land of its soul. So here's what's interesting about this first, this, this birth certificate situation. This whole situation makes sense only if you can grasp that the certificate of live birth and the birth certificate come from two different places. It comes from what? The, birth, the, the, the will and testament. What is the will of the child? It's land. What is the testament of the child? It's property. What is the property? The title. So you have the physical child and his character, the physical child and his title. You have the land and the property, which is these two situations. The land is the will, and this title is the property or testament. Now the child, the, the, the newborn, has a complete estate. What is the complete estate? His physical body and his title, which mother created through her hand. So that's what's happening here. Until people understand this, uh, there, there really is, it, it happens for everybody and it has happened for all of us. Let me, let me see if there's anything else here that I, that I should... Uh... <clears throat> you guys, anybody have any... Um... Oh, by the way, this estate is the same estate that I showed that is administrated over by the law merchant court system. Why? Because the child is 18 year, up to 18 years old, is considered an infant, and is legally disabled by the court system, the private court, the Department of Justice. So the child, is her, his or her estate, both property and land, is administrated over by a guardian until 18. After 18, what happens? The child's considered a legal idiot because why? Well, here's what happens. Does, here's, a, here's a question for everybody out there. <clears throat> Did, when, what is the age of majority in uh, Illinois? That's a trick question, obviously, because the age of majority is irrelevant in any of the so-called states. Why? Because the age of majority is not chronological. The age of majority is when this child or man is willing to take full liability, thank you, Ron, full liability or responsibility for his or her life. The moment the child is willing to take over responsibility 100%, of, over his estate. That is both the land and property or the will and testament. The child has to be 100% willing to assume responsibility. Does that mean you can have insurance? Nope. Does that mean you can let the state take care of you? Nope. Does that mean it's going to be very difficult <laughs> to be free of this situation? Yep. Why? Because of the deception, the lies, Everybody in Congress is working against you. Everybody in the court system is working against you. Every cop out there is working against you. Every single person involved in their system is working against you. What are the odds? 
How many Americans would be willing to give up anything to become free? How many Americans would be willing, willing to walk away from this garbage, from their stuff, their, their commercial aspect, their commercial person, their commercial character, to be free? Come on, patriots! How many of you would be willing to give up your house, your car, all of your stuff? to be free. I don't believe any of you. I, I don't believe any of you patriots would be willing to do that. You know what you want to do? You want to believe in somebody like a Ron Paul. You want to believe that you don't, you don't have to do anything. <laughs> you, don't, you don't want to have to give up anything. You want your cake and eat it too. You can't do that. You want to be free, you got to take full responsibility, and only your will is an expression of that what? That's the only, I mean, to do it is, it, is an expression of who you are. You have to do it in order for it to be your will. Every day you show up in their court, it's an act of your will. Every day you, you deal with their, their police, it's an act of your will. Every day that you watch the television and, 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 and watch the mayhem that the United States military, the, the world's murder machine, out there killing for profit, the fact that you do nothing is your will. What can we do about that? Hey, we need to walk away from it. Again, it's right back to withdrawing consent. Everything comes back to consent, because if you don't really want to do it, you won't do it. And if you do do it, it's an act of your will. Absolutely. So, again, I hope everybody can see this. Uh, is, is, it, is this viewable, at least? Okay. Um, all you guys that, that don't understand how the title or the character or the idea of the parent, you know what? Watch this a thousand times if you have to. This situation is fiction. This situation is real world. It's living, breathing realm. Two entities are born. Two entities are created in a hospital or born in a hospital. One is born through the water, which is a living, breathing child. One is born through the hand, but it's still the will of the mother, or the mother, the hand, and that's a new character which turns into a title. And that title is what they, they require in their Department of Justice court system. It's as simple as that. If you take away this property from their, their system, if you, if you were actually to obliterate this side of the equation, if you could, what would you be doing? You'd be freeing yourself from their fictional realm, from their fictional house, from their private business. On that, um, I got one more to do and, and then uh, we'll be done for, for the day. All right, this is it. This is the last one. And this is probably one, and if, if, if Americans understand this, uh, it, it, it will be the termination of the cancer we know of as, uh, well, the slavery that every American has been under since, well, maybe voter registration, 15th Amendment, 1870, or since they made us all a commodity through the birth certificate of 19, as of 1933. But this is where I hope everybody grasps. This might be the most important stuff of all day, all, that I've done all day here. As you can see behind me, I drew a picture of the house. What is the house? What I'm going to call it is, this is the house where all Americans reside. What does that make it? A residence. Okay? This is where all Americans reside. What do I mean by that? Remember, <clears throat> I said that every hospital in America is what? It's a charitable organization. And every charitable organization, every hospital is considered a foundling, F-O-U-N-D-L-I-N-G, foundling hospital. That's where all children born in those hospitals are abandoned and what? Adopted by the state. Where are those abandoned children put? In an orphanage. <laughs> Let's just go to here. Orphanage. What is this orphanage? It is the House of Congress. The House of Congress. The upper house is the Senate, 
The lower house is the representatives, but it nevertheless is the house. It is the house where every abandoned child, every child born in a hospital in America, every single U.S. citizen exists. Let me, uh, this is Black's Law. I'm going to go right off the bat to page, I'm not kidding, 666. Six, six. And I'm going to explain what the, what, what the term, the legal term, household, actually says in Black's Law. It says the term household is generally synonymous with family for insurance purposes and includes those who dwell together as a family under the same roof. Now remember what your dad said. Your dad, your dad, your, your living, breathing dad, not your parents' patrie, father, the state, your real dad. What has he always said to you? You live under my roof. You live by my rules. Well, guess what? <coughs> Everybody that lives in this house, that resides in this house of Congress, lives under house rules as well. What are those house rules called? <laughs> Public policy. The house rules, house rules, is public policy. Public policy. That means the Patriot Act. If you live, if you reside in their house, the Patriot Act is public policy. How about anything the Department of Homeland Security is deciding upon? How about, how about the FEMA camps? How about uh, the, 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 uh, the chemtrails? How about the fluoride in the water? Can they do anything they want to the children, the orphans, in their house? Absolutely. Why? Because house rules is called public policy. Who's in charge of the public policy? Who, who writes public policy? The legislature. Do they write law where the kings live? No. They write policy for the law merchant, the Department of Justice, to adjudicate over. So in their house, you have the Department of Justice. To do what? To watch over the children, the orphans. Does the Department of Justice affect any Mexicans? No. Why? Because the Mexicans don't live in this house. They're not orphans of this house. Only those born in, on American soil, only those born in American hospitals, public hospitals, charitable public hospitals, foundling hospitals. By the way, I said this earlier tonight or today. Everything I'm talking about right now, this house, Congress, the United States, anywhere there's a central bank in power, this exact same system is going on in your country. doesn't matter what the house is. In America, or in the United States, I should say, is the House of Congress. But out in Canada, you know, in Great Britain, in Australia, you guys all have your own house. You have your own system. There's a birth certificate for everybody. What do you think? That, what was the first thing they did over in the Mideast when, when, when Iraq fell? They, they, the central bankers went in and did what? Well, of course, we know that they're just spreading democracy, but that's irrelevant. The point is, is that they set up their system, their system of slavery. So anyway, let me read this one more time. I'm going to keep this last segment very, very short. The term household is generally synonymous with family for insurance purposes and includes those who dwell together as a family under the same roof. Isn't that what they are? Aren't we our brothers and sisters? We're all supposed to be one giant happy family in the United States, are we not? Um... There's one thing I do want to talk about this, and if you were, you had to see the last segment to see that the certificate of title was required for the Department of Justice to actually do what? Construct the trust around that piece of property. That piece of property that the Department of Justice constructs their trust around is the certificate of title. If you look up in Black's Law certificate of title, you see the word or the term insurance. Again, for insurance purposes. Why? Because they need somebody to pay 
for the children within the house. Who's paying for it? Who's insuring the children of this house? The 14th Amendment Trust takes care of all these children. And what, what is the 14th Amendment Trust? It's where all of your property goes. All of your fruit, all the fruit of your labor goes into the 14th Amendment Trust to do what? Take care of the orphans of this house. All right, so it says, term household is generally synonymous with family. Okay, let's do this. Let's go over to family real quick. <clears throat> family, a collective body of persons who live in one house and under one head or management. Can you believe that? Family. I don't, I don't, I don't remember <laughs> you know, all the names of apparently my brothers and sisters. Because it says here, a collective body of persons who live in one house under one head or management. This group here are the managers of your estate. Of your estate, 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 of your estate. They're the management team put in place by who? The bankers. The bankers. So again, let's, 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 let's do one more thing. Let's look up, uh, let's do something interesting for, for people. We're going to go up and look up, uh, how about domestic? I'll, I'm going to close with this. I'm going to tie up a few loose ends here, but I want people to see what the word domestic is. Everybody thinks they understand domestic. How much time do I have, by the way? As much as you want. Okay, well, okay. I don't, okay. don't want to... Um, You're 10 minutes. Okay, I'm at 10 minutes now. Let's do this. Here it is. Domestic. Gosh. Okay, so how many people... They always say that the, these guys in Congress are supposed to be what? Public servants. Right? No. Remember that this house is a public house. Public house. This is the public. This is the general population. It's the general public. Understand it. What, what is the judge, the so-called judge, the administrator, what does he say? What is the jurisdiction that he's adjudicating? General jurisdiction. That is this jurisdiction. That's where the Department of Justice rules. There is no Article III court in this, in this house. There are no Article III courts inside this house. Only Department of Justice. Here we go. Domestic. What is domestic? I said this in Season of Treason 2, I believe. The domestic. <clears throat> a household servant. A domestic is a household servant. Don't be offended, but it's not some Mexican woman cleaning up after your children. A domestic is a household, household servant. Who are the servants of this house? It is not Congress. They're the management team for the Bank of England. Who is the management? Who, who is the servants of this house? It is the orphans that live within the house. It is the paupers. The, the paupers are the ones that have no property. They're the ones that have to be helped. By what? By their parents. Parents patrie. That's who runs this house. Your new parents, after your birth, after the abandonment by your mother and father, your, no, your mom and dad, they're living, breathing, they abandon you, not knowing what they're doing, to this house. You become a domestic servant, a household servant, for the rest of your life to the House of Congress. Do you, don't you ever wonder... Why everything you want to have happen is opposite of what actually happens? It's because they're doing everything for your general welfare. This house is a welfare state. It is a house of welfare. Everybody in it is a pauper. Domestic, a household servant. Domestic as an adjective. Pertaining, belonging, or relating to a home, a domicile, the place of birth. Who's born to this house? 
14th Amendment says all persons born or naturalized. All persons. It doesn't say all people. It doesn't say all boys. It doesn't say all girls. It says all persons. All persons are commercial fictions. All commercial fictions are what? Registered to the United States. All persons are registered. All persons are created in this house. All persons are created in this house. Domestic, adjective, pertaining, belonging, or relating to home, a domicile, a place of birth, origin, creation, or transaction. All persons are in this house. The company you work for is a person in this house. The company that owns the company you work for is in this house. All persons are in this house. All persons are 14th Amendment persons in this house. They're all corporate fictions. All of them, 100%. And they're all orphans to be what? Managed by Congress. Why? Because all the children, the orphans in this house, their parents are the state to be a parent's patrie. Let's go one more. I'm going to go one further here. <clears throat> Domestic servant, which is every orphan, which is every American. Hey, way to go, patriots. Keep voting. Keep participating in their system. Keep, you know what? It's your action, it's your will that keeps these monsters in place. It's your will. We just need, you know what? If we just get two good people in. You know what? Let's, let's, let's take that just for a second. Two good people. If we get two good people, what are those people? Managers. Anybody in Congress, Senate or, re, or, or representatives. They're managers of the House. Tell me what they're going to do to help the orphans. Nothing. These people are flying around in private jets. Why? Because they live off the fruit of your labor. You know what you need to look up? Usufruct. Usufruct. This is a system of usufructus. Usufructus is the managers get to keep the fruit of your labor. What is that called? Testament. The testament is the fruit of your labor, which is why you never hear of testament anymore. Every single attorney works with wills, but they don't work with testament. Why? Because all testament, testament, is stay, it testament stays in the house. All testament stays in the house. Why? To take care of the orphans. To take care of the orphans. How do I know this? You know what's funny? This book right here. This was written in 1845, the High Court of Chancery, pleadings in that court. It states in here, in 1845, what they were going to do in 1868, by creating the, US, the corporate U.S. citizenship, 14th Amendment. It's in this, 1845. You know what's funny? That's only 23 years later. I mean, the people that do this stuff, the, the monsters, the new, the, the new world order folks, the powers that be, they're working in advance. A domestic servant. Here we go. A person hired or employed. There you go. Anybody that wonders where their IRS status comes from? You don't think you're an employee of the House? You don't think you're an employee of Congress? You don't think you're an employee of the United States? <laughs> you absolutely are. You're a domestic servant. A domestic servant. A person hired or employed primarily for the performance of household duties and chores. By the way, doesn't duty come along with lack of responsibility? If you're liable for your life, do you have duty to somebody else? Absolutely not. Those people that take responsibility for their lives are not dutiful to somebody else. Again, the performance for performance of household duties and chores. The maintenance of the home. And the care, comfort, and convenience of members of the household. What does that mean? That means everything you do is to make sure your brothers and sisters, your fellow orphans in the house are taken care of. All of your labor, all the fruit of your labor, all the testament of your life goes into this house and stays there forever to help the orphans born into the system, the paupers. Finally, let's just close with this. and I'll, I'll go on a little bit, but I, I want this to be the close. Domestic authority. Domestic authority, the right of parents, parents, parents patrie, the right of parents, and by extension the right of teachers to discipline and compel obedience to their lawful commands and their children 
formally extended to the to authority of husbands over their wives. To compel is force. See what's going on here? It goes like this. Mother creates a character through her hand, a new person. The person is subject to the 14th Amendment. The 14th Amendment person is a creation and resides inside this house. People think that, that you know, they're taking from you through taxes and all that stuff. They're not taking from you. They're allowing you to keep what they already claim is theirs.